శ్రీ సాయి సచరిత్ర చాప్టర్ ఫైవ్ టైటిల్స్ బాబాస్ రిటర్న్ విత్ చాన్ పాటిల్స్ మ్యారేజ్ పార్టీ వెల్కమ్డ్ అండ్ అడ్రస్డ్ ఎస్ సాయి కాంటాక్ట్ విత్ అదర్ సీన్స్ హిస్ అటైర్ అండ్ డైలీ రూటీన్ ద స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ ది పాదుకాస్ రెస్లింగ్ బౌట్ విత్ మొయిదీన్ చేంజ్ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ టర్నింగ్ వాటర్ ఇన్ టు ఆయిల్ ద సూడో గురు జవహర్ అలీ రిటర్న్ విత్ చాన్ పాటిల్స్ మ్యారేజ్ పార్టీ As hinted in the last chapter, I shall now describe first how Sai Baba returned to Shirdi after his disappearance. There lived in the Aurangabad district Nizam state in a village called Dhup a well-to-do Mohammedan gentleman by the name Chand Patil. While he was making a trip to Aurangabad, he lost his mare. For two long months he made diligent search but could not get trace of the lost mare. After being disappointed he returned from aurangabad with the saddle on his back after traveling four course and a half he came on the way to a mango tree at the foot of which sat a fakir he had a cap on his head wore a kafni and had a satka that is a short stick under his arm and he was preparing to smoke a chilam pipe on seeing chan patil pass by he called out to him and asked him to have a smoke and rest a little the queer fellow or fakir asked him about the saddle chan patil replied that it was of his mare which was lost some time back the fakir asked him to make a search in the nala close by he went and wonder of wonders he found the mare there he thought this that this fakir was not an ordinary man but an avliya that is a great saint He returned to the fakir with the mare the chilam was ready for being smoked but two things were wanting first a fire to light the pipe and second water to wet the chapai that is a piece of cloth through which the smoke is drawn up the fakir took his prong and thrust it forcibly into the ground and out came a live ember which he put on the pipe then he dashed his satka on the ground from where water began to ooze the chapai was wetted with that water then wrung out and wrapped around the pipe thus everything being complete the fakir smoked the chilam and then gave it and then gave it also to chan patil on seeing all this chan patil was wonderstruck he requested the fakir to come to his home and accept his hospital hospitality next day He went to Patil's house and stayed there for some time. Patil was a village officer of Dhup. His wife's brother's son was to be married and the bride was from Shirdi. So Patil made preparations to start for Shirdi for the marriage. The fakir also accompanied the marriage party. The marriage went off without any hitch. The party returned to Dhup gaon except the fakir who stayed back in Shirdi and remained there forever. how the fakir got the name sai when the marriage party came to shirdi it alighted at the foot of a banyan tree in bhagat mahalsapati's field near khandoba temple the carts were loosened in the open courtyard of khandoba temple and the members of the party descended one by one and the fakir also got down bhagat mahalsapati saw the young fakir getting down and accosted him saying ya sai meaning welcome sai others also addressed him as sai and therefore he became sai baba contact with other saints sai baba began to stay in a deserted masjid one saint named devidas had been living in shirdi for many years before baba came there baba liked his company he stayed with him in the maruti temple in the chavadi and for some time lived alone then came another saint by the name janaki das baba spent most of his time in talking with him or janik or janaki das went to baba's residence so also one vaishya householder saint from puntambe by name gangagir always frequented shirdi when he first saw sai baba carrying pitchers of water in both hands for watering the garden he was amazed and said openly blessed is shirdi that it got this precious jewel this man carrying water today 
This man is carrying water today, but he is not an ordinary fellow. As this land was fortunate and meritorious, it secured its gel. So also one famous saint by name uh, Anandnath of Ye- Yevala Math, a disciple of Akkalkot Maharaj, came to Shirdi with some people. When he saw Sai Baba, he said openly, This is a precious diamond in reality. Though he looks like an ordinary man, he is not an ordinary stone, but a diamond. You will realize this in the near future. Saying this, he returned to Yevala. This was said while Sai Baba was a youngster. Baba's dress and daily routine. In his young days, Sai Baba grew the hair on on his head. Never had his head shaved. He dressed like an athlete. When he went to Rahata, that is three miles from Shirdi, he brought with him small plants of marigold, jai and jui. And after clean, cleaning them, he planted and watered them. A devotee by name Vamantatya supplied him with two unbaked earthen pitchers daily. With these, Baba himself used to water the plants. He drew water from the well and carried the pitchers on his shoulders. In the evening, the pitchers were kept at the foot of the neem tree. As soon as they were placed there, they broke as they were made of mud and not baked. Next day, Tatya supplied two fresh pitchers. This course went on for three years and with Sai Baba's toil and effort, there grew, there grew a garden. On this site, at present stands the big mansion, Samadhi Mandir of Baba, which is now frequented by so many devotees. The Story of Padukas, Footprints Under the Neem Tree A devotee of Akalkot Maharaj by name Bhai Krishnaji Alibakkar worshipped the photo of Akalkot Maharaj. He once thought of going to Akalkot in Solapur district, take the darshan of the Padukas, footprints of the Maharaj and offer his sincere prayers there. But before he could go there, he got a vision in his dream. Akalkot Maharaj appeared in the vision and said to him, Now Shirdi is my resting place. Go there and offer your worship. So Bhai changed his plan and came to Shirdi, worshipped Baba, stayed there for six months and was happy. As a reminiscence of of this vision, etc., he prepared the Padukas and installed them on an auspicious day of Shravan, Shaka, 1834-1912 AD, under the neem tree with due ceremonies and formalities, conducted by Dada Kelkar and Upasani. One Dikshit Brahmin was appointed for worship, and the management was entrusted to devotee Sagun. Complete version of the story. Mr. B. V. Dev, a retired Mamlatadar of Thane and a great devotee of Sai Baba, made inquiries about this matter with Sagun Meru Nayak and Govind Kamlakar Dikshit and has published a full version of the Padukas in Sai Lila, Volume 11, Number 1, Page 25. It runs as follows. In 1834 Shaka, 1912 AD, one Dr. Ram Rao Kothare of Mumbai came to Shirdi for Baba's darshan. His compounder and his friend Bhai Krishnaji Alibakkar accompanied him. The compounder and Bhai became, became intimate and Sagun Meru Nayak with Sagun Meru Nayak and G.K. Dikshit. While discussing things, these persons thought that there must be some memorial of Sai Baba's first advent at Shirdi and his sitting under the holy neem tree. They thought of installing Baba's Paduka there and were going to make them of some rough stone. Then Baba, then Bhai's friend, the compounder, suggested that if this matter was made known to his master, Dr. Ramarao Kothare, he would prepare nice padukas for this purpose. All liked this idea, all liked this proposal of Dr. Kothare and was informed of it. He came to Shirdi and drew a plan of the padukas. He went to Upasani Maharaj in Khandoba's temple and showed him his plan. The latter made many improvements, drew lotus flower, conch, disc, mace, etc. and suggested that the following shloka regarding Neem Tree's greatness and Baba's yogic powers be inscribed in the verse as follows. 
Upasani Maharaj's suggestions were accepted and carried out. The padukas were made in Mumbai and sent to Shirdi with the compounder. Baba said that they would be installed on the Purnima, 15th of Shravan. On that day at 11 am, G.K. Dikshit brought them on his head from Khandoba's temple to the Dwarka Mai uh, Masjid in a procession. Baba touched the padukas, saying that these are the feet of the Lord and asked the people to install them at the foot of the neem tree. A day earlier, one Parsi devotee of Mumbai named Pastha Set has sent Rs 25 by money order. Baba gave this sum for the installation of the padukas. The total expense of installation came to Rs 100, <laughs> out of which Rs 75 were collected by subscriptions for the first five years. G.K. Dikshit worshipped the Padukas daily and then this was done by Lakshman Lakshman Kacheshwar uh, Jakhadi. In the first five years, Dr. Kothare sent rupees 2 per month for lighting the lamp and also sent the railing around the Padukas. The expense of bringing the railing from the station to Shirdi was rupees, was rupees 7 and 8 paise. Presently rupees 7.8. 50 paise. The rooting, the roofing was paid by <coughs> Sagun Meru Nayak. Now Jakadi Nana Pujari does the worship and Sagun Meru Nayak offers the Naivedya and lights the evening lamp. Bhai Krishna ji was originally a devotee of Akalkot Maharaj. He had come to Shirdi at the installation of the Padukas. In Saka 1834, on his way to Akalkot, he wanted to go to Akalkot. He wanted to go to Akkal court after taking the darshan of Baba. He asked Baba's permission for this. Baba said, Oh, what is there in Akkal court? Why do you go there? The Maharaj of that place is here myself. Hearing this, Bhai did not go to Akkal court. He came to Shirdi off and on and after installation of the off and on after the installation of the Padukas. Mr. B. V. Dev concluded that Hemadpant did not know these details. Had he known them, he would not have failed to depict them in his Satcharitra. Wrestling bout with Mauddin Tamboli and change in lifestyle. To return to other stories of Baba, there was a wrestler in Shirdi by the name Mauddin Tamboli. Baba and he did not agree on some points and both had a fight. In this, Baba was defeated. Thenceforth, Baba changed his dress and mode of living. He donned kafni, wore a langot, and covered his head with a piece of cloth. He took a piece of sack cloth for his bed and was content with wearing torn and worn out rags. He always said that poverty is better than kingship, far better than lordship. The lord is always brother and befriend, befriend of the poor. Gangagir was also very fond of wrestling. Once, while he was wrestling, a similar feeling of dispassion descended over him and at the proper time he heard the voice of an apt saying that he should wear out his body playing with God. So he too gave up samsara and turned towards God realization. He established a mutt on the banks of the river near Puntambe and lived there with his disciples. Sai Baba did not mix and speak with people. He only gave answers when he was questioned. By day he, he always sat under the neem tree, sometimes in the shade of a babul tree near the stream on the outskirts of the village. In the afternoon, he used to walk at random and go, and go at times to Neemgao. There, he frequented the house of Bala Sahib Dengle. Baba loved Mr. Bala Sahib. His younger brother named Nana Sahib had no son, though he married a second wife. Bala Sahib sent Nana Sahib for taking darshan of Sai Baba and after some time, with his grace, Nana Sahib got a son. From that time onwards, people began to come in large numbers to see Sai Baba and his fame began to spread and reached Ahmednagar. From thence, Nana Sahib Chandurkar and Keshav Chidambar and many others began to come to Shirdi. Baba was surrounded by devotees during day and slept at night in an old and dilapidated, dilapidated masjid. 
Baba's paraphernalia at this time consisted of a chilam, tobacco, a turmel, tin pot, long kafni, that is a piece, a piece of cloth around his head and a satka, which he always kept with him. The piece of white cloth on his head was twisted like matted hair and flowed down from the left ear on the back. This was not washed for weeks. He wore no shoes, no sandals. A piece of sack cloth was his seat for most of the day. He wore a kaupin, a waist cloth band, and for warding of cold, he always sat in front of Duni, that is sacred fire, facing south, with his left hand resting on the wooden railing. In that Dhuni, he offered an oblation of egoism, desires, and always uttered Allah Malik. God is the sole owner. The masjid in which he sat was only two room dimensions, where all devotees came and saw him. After 1912, there was a change. The old masjid was repaired and a pavement was constructed. Before Baba came to live in this masjid, he lived for a long time in a place Takia, where the Gunguru, where with Gunguru small bells tied on his ankles, Baba danced beautifully and sang with tender love. Turning water into oil. Sai Baba was very fond of lights. He used to borrow oil from shopkeepers and keep lamps burning the whole night in the masjid and masjid and temple. This went on for some time. The banyas who supplied oil greatest once met and once met together and decided not to give him oil when as usual baba went to ask for oil they all gave him a distinct no unperturbed baba returned to the masjid and kept the dry wicks in the lamps the banyas were watching him with curiosity baba took the uh, turmel tin pot which contained very little a few drops of oil put water into it and drank it and then forced it out to fall into the container. After, consecra after consecrating the tin pot in this way, he again took the water from the tin pot and filled all the lamps with it and lighted them. To the surprise and dismay of watching banyas, the lamps began to burn and kept burning the whole night. The banyas repented and apologized for their action and Baba forgave them and asked them, to be more truthful in future. The Pseudo Guru Jawhar Ali Five years after the wrestling bout mentioned above, one fakir from Ahmednagar by name Jawhar Ali came to Rahata with his disciples and stayed in Bakhal, a spacious room near with the, uh, Veerabhadra temple. The fakir was learned, could repeat the whole Quran and had a sweet tongue. Many religious and devout people of the village came to him and began to respect him. With the help of the people, he started to build an idga, a walled enclosure in which Mohammedans pray on pray on Eid day near the Veerabhadra temple. There was some quarrel about this, and on uh, on account of which Jawahar Ali had to leave Rahata. Then. He came to Shirdi and lived in the masjid with Baba. People were captured by his sweet talk and he began to call Baba his disciple. Baba did not object and consented to be his chela, that is disciple. Then both Guru and chela decided to return to Rahata and lived there. The Guru never knew his disciple's worth but the disciple knew the shortcomings of, shortcomings of the Guru. Still he never disres disrespected him. Observing carefully his duties, he even served the master in various ways. They used to come to Shirdi off and on, but their main stay was in Rahata. The loving devotees of Baba in Shirdi did not like that Baba should stay away from them in Rahata. So they went in, in a deputation to bring Baba back to Shirdi. When they met Baba near the Idga and told the purpose for which they came, Baba said to them that the fakir was an angry, ill-tempered fellow. He would not leave him and that they should better go back to Shirdi without him before the fakir returned. 
while they were thus talking the fakir turned up and was very angry with them for trying to take away his disciple there was some hot discussion and altercation and it was finally decided that both the guru and chela should return to shirdi and so they returned and lived in shirdi but after a few days the guru was tested by devidas and he was found wanting 12 years before baba arrived in shirdi with the marriage party this devidas aged about 10 or 11 came to shirdi and lived in the maruti temple devidas had fine features and brilliant eyes and he was dispassion incarnate in a and a dhyani many people namely tatya kote uh, kashinath and others regarded him as their guru they brought jawhar ali in his presence and in the discussion that followed jawhar was worsted and fled from shirdi he went and stayed in bijapur and returned after many years to shirdi and prostrated himself before sai baba the delusion that he was the guru and sai baba his chela was cleared away and he repented sai baba treated him with respect in this case sai baba showed by his conduct how one should get rid of egoism and do duties of a disciple and to attain the highest end with self realization this story is told here according to the version given by mahalsapati a great devotee of baba in the next chapter ram navmi festival the masjid its former condition and later improvements in it etc will be described bow to shri sai peace to be all om sai om sai om sai